25 minutes after the hour, the country of Venezuela descending into chaos personified. People flooding the streets, re resisting the government as children go hungry. Inflation skyrockets out of control. But this isn't the same. Uh, this isn't the same nation that liberals held up as a model for socialist utopia, was it? Bernie Sanders even once said this: "These days, the American dream is more apt to be realized in South America, in such places as Ecuador, Venezuela, and Argentina, where incomes are actually more equal today." Really, where's Bernie Sanders endorsing? the Venezuelan dream. So where are the American dreams now? Mega TV star uh, anchor Elvira Salazar has covered the left's obsession with, the, with South American socialism extensively, and she joins us right now. Elvira, why aren't we seeing Bernie Sanders salute uh, the great uh, democracy, the great socialist empire in Venezuela? Because with all due respect, he's what the communist and the socialists call a useful fool means those people that believe that the Chavez revolution and the Castro revolution brought uh, heaven on earth to the Venezuelan and to the Cuban people. Especially That's the problem that, right. yes. And then we watch what he did, what Maduro did a couple of days ago. He arrested the people that ran against them because of what he posted on social media. And he makes up a bunch of votes, that he gets a bunch of fictitious votes to put him in power and prop him up. And since he has control of the army, there's no sign of this letting up. Meanwhile, this is what Bernie Sanders so, says in support of Venezuela in 2013. Uh, these are the people that have also supported him, too. You got Sanders, Jose Serrano, Jesse Jackson, Sean Penn, Oliver Stone, and Michael Moore. Where are we so Why are well, we celebrating them? Yeah, well, you know what they do? They should go to Havana, they should go to Caracas and live there for more than a week without dollars. And you will see how much they're going to love what they see and what they have to go through. Look at what the Venezuelan people are doing. They're starving and they're crossing to Colombia to buy toilet paper and to buy basic necessities. But that's the problem that the left does not see what communism has brought to this hemisphere. And the good thing in this occasion, I just want to point out, that the United States did not present or implemented an embargo against Venezuela just like it did to Cuba. We have kept social, trade, commercial, financial, and diplomatic relations with Venezuela. Full-fledged. So now the Venezuelans cannot say that what's happening in the country is because right. of the Yankee imperialists. Very oh no, we're still buying their oil. And still, the Trump administration has not decided on the what we call the nuclear option, which is to stop buying the Venezuelan oil because we're their number one partner. If we don't pay for that oil, which is 70% of their economy, their economy, their economy will collapse. Right. Meanwhile, we have enough oil for ourselves. And finally, President Trump unveiled his, uh, through Senator Cotton in Purdue, what he would like to see when it comes to uh, our new immigration system, legal immigration, cutting green cards from 1 million to 500,000, em eliminate immigration preferences given to extended family members, and make it merit-based, similar to Canada and Australia. Australia. How does that play out in places in South and Central America? Well, uh, I think that basically what we have to look at here is that the administration is, is, is basing this whole new uh, proposal on immigration based on fear. And I think that's what we really have to, and, and the Hispanic community that I represent and the Anglo-American conservatives, we have to come to terms and understand that there is fear and that the immigrants are not coming to take anything away from the Americans. The American worker or the Hispanic American worker, we're coming to contribute. And it's basically the fear of the, the forces of assimilation, and that's a key word we need to repeat and we need to understand. And yesterday was mentioned by Senator Perdue, assimilation and the, the forces of assimilation, according to their views, are fatigued and they need to be, they need to be mm -hmm. relaxed. Right. And it's immigration reform, it's, it's very complex and that's what we need to sit at the table and create an immigration reform law that includes legal and illegal for students right. and for everybody. Elvira, I know what you say, that there, there might be an element of fear to it, but for the most part, I think it's an element of savvy. People saying, well, what's best for America? You know, it's not equal access to our country. We're Americans. We know we hit lot to be here. It doesn't mean everyone can get here. And they want to set up a criteria that isn't 60 and years that's old. Fine. 
and that's fine. 65, 1965 law is the one that started this flood. 50, in 50 years, 60 million people, most of them Hispanics. That's why we're 55 million people, 18% of the population, the largest minority in the country. I agree with you. Let's revise it and let's allow right. those that are good for the country. And let's, let's but with a heart. Right. Obviously, exactly. I mean, we are the biggest and the, and the most benevolent and the best country in the world. We need to continue being that. And absolutely, we need to have people that will contribute, people that know some English. And I know that that's right. a, a, a very a sticky point that we need to revise. But people that are good gotcha. for the country. But El immigrants are good for the country in the, in the, uh, in the and, most And Elvira, part. and you know what it's good, it's good for us is to get out and roll commercials so we continue to do segments like this. Elvira Salazar, thanks so much. Appreciate it.